Okay, thank you very much. So, um, so hi, I'm Manuel Urueña. Uh, Ignacio is, is back there, so say hi. Um, okay, so we are going to, um, this talk is, is about user experience, uh, but just a background of ourselves, you, we are just a couple of uh, academic guys try to replace password with, with something else. Uh, probably we <laughs> weren't able to do that. <laughs> Um, but we, we are trying to understand why, why passwords are the way they are and why users just prefer them. Um, but one of the things we want to, um, we are interested in is in like common users. So we are not, I mean, the NSA is not in our threat model. Okay, so just, we just want to have, provide like a good security for the common user, not really for people um, feeding the government. Okay, so we want to start, so we are new in, in this field, so we want to start um, analyzing the, the user experience of authentication, uh, and that talk is just about that. It's about user experience, what the, the user see. Okay, so here, I mean, if you were expecting any crypto thing or clever hack, sorry, this is not your talk. Um, and, well, at least, uh, I think we can make this, this guy happy. He's been trying to, to put that uh, figure in, in, in a presentation. Okay, but the objective of this, um, of this study is just to, to get some answer to this <coughs> question. So why passwords are still in use? Why people still prefer them to other alternatives? Okay, so for, before starting with the um, with the results, let's talk a, a, a little bit about the, the assumptions we have. So we have like a mini threat model. Um, so in our threat model, we try to, to think in what is the current situation nowadays. So we can say that server side is more or less quite secure, at least for major uh, cloud providers, I would say. So you can assume that communications is on, on HTTPS, that cookies are well handled, um, that Google doesn't have like a trivial vulnerability to, to dump all the, all the passwords. And actually, I mean, I think this has happened recently, so I want to thank uh, Let's Encrypt for uh, improving the HTTPS, and also major cloud providers, I think we have, it has improved a lot the security of, of, common, of regular users. Okay, so the problem of hardening the, the server side is now that probably the attackers are going to focus on the client side. This is like a, um, a problem of the, of the first point. So um, we are kind of expecting that there is going to be more and more malware in the uh, client PC. And this is a problem for, for many authentication mechanisms. So, but we are, again, we are not talking about NSA implants, and memory dumps and things. So we are just talking about um, typical rats. So we are talking about key logging, uh, maybe get some fields, uh, some files, so something like that. Um, and also, so this is just like the technical um, aspects, but the main topic of our study right now is, is the users. So in the users, we really think that they try to do the right thing, so they want to, to have a secure, um, a secure authentication, but obviously they are not perfect. We cannot just ask them to do impossible things like, well, the, the, the same thing. Um, and obviously it's not their fault. Actually, I would say that the current situation of passwords is because uh, ourselves, I mean, because the way we design the, the system to, to be authenticated, okay? So we will see um, this a bit later. Um, so what kind of threats we can think against the, the, the user? So obviously phishing, I think it's like the main problem. Um, social engineering, uh, well, the limitation of memory, passion, so uh, mainly time, okay? And also regarding the, the attackers, uh, obviously we can say that most of the attackers are in the, in the internet, but this is for common users, so it's not that some APT is going to infiltrate in your laptop, that will happen. So we are thinking about maybe your husband wants to see what, what are your messages, maybe your wife, so this kind of thing. So we, can all, we also consider that maybe you have also casual attackers uh, near you, okay? 
And regarding the, the scientific methodology, so none. I mean, actually, this is a hacker talk because we still don't have any scientific results at all. So please don't, uh, don't use our times for anything. I mean, it's just a, a one experiment with two users. You will never guess, guess who, who they are. And, uh, but I mean, uh, the idea is to, to repeat all of these with, with real users. So probably we will have um, better results later. OK, so let's start with the, with the authentication. So obviously, let's start with um, password. Um, so actually, so probably the, the first step might su surprise you, mostly because nobody do that. But actually, this is the assumption we made during the, the system. We just make the assumption that the user checks every time it enters the password that it's putting the password in the right place. And this is really hard. I mean, if we go to the, to the old thing, well, even for local authentic, uh, authentication, which is just control alt soup in, instead of having this uh, phishing page, I think most people don't do that anyway. Uh, regarding remote authentication, well, for sure you have to check the, the, the domain name, OK, in the page. Uh, this is basic. Then, if you are more uh, paranoid, you also have to check the, the, the green log. Maybe it's a money in the middle. Or just the, 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 the final thing is even to check the, the CA, what is the certification authority of that certificate. Okay? So any of you do that every time? I mean, you're a security expert. You know all these things. Any of you do that just to enter Twitter to check? OK? So um, the problem is that, well, there are some technical things that may help here. So maybe if we use a strict transport security, there is no need to check the, the green log. If you go to Google, I mean, if you check it's Google, then it's Google and it's, it's, it's encrypted. Um, maybe public key pinning may help in the CA. So actually, well, in the end, never, nobody does that. But there is no way to, to, to replace this. Okay, you have to check the DNS name. I mean, there is no way there is no technical way to check if you are going to the right to the right place. Okay, um, so that's why I think phishing is so uh, it's a problem because this is just an assumption that nobody does. Okay, and that's the root of, of all the phishing. Um, also, well, I have put social engineering here because actually it's part of the check authenticity. If somebody calls you to say that I need your password for some reason, probably the, the problem is that you trust this guy for being from, from that organization. OK, um, then after that, so and, and that's a big, uh, a lot of time. I mean, if you do all of this, it's plus five seconds, which is comparable with typing the password. So you are telling the users that you have to spend half of the time just checking this. Okay. So obviously, then you have to uh, remember what is your, your password which obviously leads to uh, password reuse, OK? But there is also a very interesting thing. Um, it's the security level. So any user you, you ask, it will tell you it has few passwords. Maybe even they say that they only have one password. But then when you ask, OK, so you have exactly the same password on Twitter and on your bank? And say, no, 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 no way. So we have different passwords. And this is kind of. Um, this is something that I think most authentication mechanism right now doesn't, doesn't support. Okay? We'll talk about this later. Um, OK, then you have to type the username. This is not, uh, not that common anymore. Uh, and then you have to type the password. We have just tried with a few passwords. But as I said, don't, don't uh, take these numbers uh, very seriously. Uh, but again, given that you have to type the password, so probably that's the reason why the simple, the, there are simple passwords. And well, given that you type it, then you have problems of keyloggers and, and solder surfing. So if you see actually all the problems that uh, we have nowadays with the passwords actually came because of this, because of targeting the user doing the, the authentication. Okay? So as a summary of um, of the password-based authentication, you have to choose either to be secure and secure without phishing or faster with, uh, with phishing. And I think most people is just going there. 
okay? Because otherwise we are asking the guy to, to spend three times the time to, to authentication. As a metric, I mean, uh, we are academics, so we need some kind of metric in order to publish the paper. So uh, in order to do that, we have just choose the total time of performing the authentication. Uh, but also, what are the, the, the user actions, especially when you switch from different kinds of actions? So for instance, typing the username and the password, we consider that this is just like typing and that's it. But probably checking the, the domain and then uh, remember the, the thing and then typing. I mean, it's like different steps. We are still looking in what is the, the correct metric um, here. Um, so obviously this is something you know, um, it has uh, different security levels. And another thing is what we call implicit authorization. One thing here is that, um, well, in this scheme it's kind of strange, but the problem here is that you never say that you want to authenticate in here. Obviously if you are spending 12 seconds on a page, probably is that you are interested in that page. But there is no way to confirm that you actually want to go uh, to, to, to Google or something that presents Google, okay? And, but also, um, besides all these problems, um, passwords has so many benefits. That's the only thing you need. You can use it anywhere. Uh, if you, even if you move to a different um, terminal, you still can use that. So it's kind of great, okay? Right, this is what explains the, the, um, the prevalence of, of passwords. Okay, um, so as the second authentication mechanism is even four seconds is a lot of time for, for most users. Okay, so um, many people just leave the sessions open, so that's it. And actually the authentication, the cookie-based authentication is really great. I mean, the user experience is just wonderful. It's, that's it, okay? But and uh, actually, it's quite difficult to do. Um, I mean, there is no phishing here because the one checking what is, that, what is the cookie for that domain is the, is the PC, is the browser. Okay, so there is no way to, to fish to get the cookie from another guy. Social engineering probably is too complex for a normal user to ask. If somebody asks you to access to certain file and read aloud a, a long string, probably nobody will try that. I mean, it's too long. And they are, depending on the site, they are really, uh, relatively uh, strong credentials. There are no credential reuse. Actually, each session has a different cookie, not sold or something. Obviously, the problems came from malware. From, I would say for malware, it's quite uh, easy to, to steal the cookie file. And also, the problem of, uh, of session cookies, given that you don't deauthenticate, Anybody with physical access with your, to your terminal can just log everywhere. And given that there is, and the, but the main, main problem here is, as I said, that there is no um, implicit authorization of, of going there. You just go there. And actually, that's the reason why we have this cross-site request forgery, because you just get redirected to some place, and you are automatically authenticated. OK? So uh, that's why I would say that this is, um, this is important. Uh, besides this, well, it's very nice. It's something you have. Uh, don't have many requirements. The problem, obviously, if you move to a different terminal, that's it. You cannot, usually, you don't take your cookies with you. And this is only for remote web access. So it's kind of limited. OK, move on. Biometrics, another um, very nice thing from um, user experience. Um, to scan your fingerprint, that's it. Okay? In two seconds, less than typing a password, uh, it works. And I think, I mean, and, uh, it seems that in mobile devices, fingerprints are getting popular. Probably because, I mean, the, the user experience is, is, is even, even better. Obviously, it has some security um, issues, but it's a really, really good thing from the, from the user experience. Okay? Um, it has some kind of explicit authorization, given that the the, the fingerprint it's, um, the fingerprint scanning is part of the operating system. They usually tell you what are what is the purpose of scanning the the, the device. I mean the, the finger. So it's kind of uh, nice. The problem is that also only only has a security level, okay. Uh, but given that usually it's only for local access, kind of 
makes sense. It's just to enter and, and that's it. Okay. The problems uh, portability. Obviously, you need uh, that you need um, uh, a new peripheral. So if it's already integrated, it's fine. But in order to support many many different devices, probably you need to deploy a lot of a lot of things. And then uh, smart cards. Um, so the the interesting thing of the smart cards is actually it's I would say it's quite popular in main companies. You have this batch, and actually it's a smart card, and many people just use the smart card for physical access uh, control, but almost known just use it for for authentication, and that's quite um, and it's really a good authentication mechanism in the sense um, in the security aspects. I mean, you can use it either for, for local authentication on your device or even for um, remote access. Um, problem is, well, they still rely on a PIN, so it's kind of to authenticate the, the transaction, although it's unclear uh, if that PIN is for that particular transaction, okay? Uh, but still, I mean, you still, it's, Kind of easy to get your pin, and once you have the pin, it's just for waiting the, the smart card to um, to be uh, introduced in the in the slot. Okay. Also, malware can just once the the smart card is unlocked, any malware in your PC may ask the the smart card to to sign things. Okay. Um, but on the other hand, is the strongest credential we have right now um, certificates. Although they usually just include one. So even if you use it for remote access, probably it's just for accessing your own organization. You, right now you cannot use certificates to, to, to log in into, into Google. Okay? So again, it has like a single security level. It's a very high security level, and actually that's the problem. The problem is that just for instance for logging into your, your PC, that you have to insert the, the card in the slot, type a pin, and this is just to, 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 to get rid of this, um, uh, of the, I mean, to enter in your, in your account, maybe that's too much. I mean, this is too high level for, for <coughs> such simple thing, okay? <clears throat> okay, so now we are going to start talking about ways to, to improve, the, the ways have, that have appeared to improve um, passwords. So we are going to start with um, passwords managers. Of course. Um, so again, one well, actually, in password manager, you have like two types of guys: um, the paranoid ones and the lazy ones. Uh, I'm from the lazy camp. So, and I argue that actually, lazy ones are the the, the secure ones. Let me let me check. Um, so most people, for instance, have a password manager, but never let's say link it with the with the browser because. Maybe somebody from the NSA goes there and starts siphoning all your, all your credentials, okay? But the problem is that um, if you don't do that, if you don't have this automatic field, now you have to be sure that the password you are, you are putting in is in the right place. So we have, again, this problem over here, okay? So we have to check. Well, right now, I won't say that this is a big problem because if you are in the paranoid mode, probably you know what is going on and maybe you can detect phishing. But if we tell the users this is the way to go and please start using passwords but don't connect it to the browser, we are going to start running into problems. I mean, uh, phishing is going to be there, okay? And most users don't, don't, don't understand phishing, don't, cannot recognize it, okay? So this is a big deal. And we still, the problem is with password manager, we still have Social engineer things because given that this is a password, somebody can just ask you for your password. And now instead of just remembering it and say it, you, you go to the, your password manager, you open it and, and tell it. Okay? So, uh, and this is a, a problem since going into the password manager and reading a password is the, the usual thing you do. So there is no way that you put some warning in there every time you want to read your, your password, especially in the offline case. It's, it's impossible. Okay, um, but so this is some uh, times here. Uh, so, but the good thing is, for instance, given that you copy the the password, now you can have a different password per account. You have strong uh, passwords, probably not solder surfing. Obviously, the malware may be 
may adapt and still get in the, the things in, in clipboard. This is something that may happen. Okay. And the problem is that we also increase a lot the time to, to put the password in there. Remember, just type in a password, a bad password is like four seconds. Now we go to 20. Okay, so offline password managers are not that good from my, my perspective. Okay? Because if you compare with, I mean, from the user perspective, what happens with autofill, I mean, it's kind of magic. I mean, it's like fingerprint, uh, but, but uh, with regular password, client side, you don't need to, to deploy anything else. Okay? Um, so we are like in the same ballpark as in as, um, fingerprints. And again, um, given that it's the password manager, the one checking the URL, you have a lot of benefits. So there is no way that you, you get fish. I mean, if you go to a phishing site, when you try to autocomplete, nothing will appear. Again, the user can still go to the password manager and, and type it in. So it's very uh, important that the autofill, I mean, that the user has the feeling that if the autofill doesn't work, that's a problem. I mean, that's something is happening there. The problem is that most autofill um, functions are made on heuristics, so they fail from time to time. So maybe there is some window there for, for, the, um, for the features. Okay? Um, and well, the problem here with the, the only problem I see with password manager is that actually, uh, well, you still have a master password there. So a keylogger will get your password, um, your master password, and also the, the vault is just a file. I mean, if it's in your, in your local um, computer, somebody can just exfiltrate it. Okay, but one of the main things here. Uh, what I think is wonderful from, from Password Manager is that a client-side solution. So you don't have to change anything at all in the server, and it still works. So it's really easy to deploy everywhere, okay? So I would say that right now this is, I would say, is the, the, the best mechanisms we, we have. Also, we have this academic debate on whether this is just something you know or something you have or something you know and something you have. Um, probably it doesn't matter, but I still don't have an answer for this. Um. Okay, and then um, if you don't use password managers, then you have second factor authentication. So um, let's start with, with SMS uh, codes. Um, again, so the problem is that it's two factor, so you still have to put the, the password in there, okay? So if you don't use password manager, you still have all the problems with passwords, okay? They are mitigated having a second factor, but still, you have all the problems. I mean, the, the, the users will never move to having just two or three passwords, okay? That's not gonna happen. Um, yeah, well, also there is an attacks, there are attacks to the, to the channel, but again, we are not talking about the NSA, it's just your wife watching that, that is. So actually the main problem uh, from SMS codes is just this little configuration about if you want to read, I mean, if you want the notifications to appear in your, in your um, lock screen, okay? So for somebody accessing your, your uh, phone, this is like a, a, a big deal, okay? And, uh, well, and also you have this five-phase copying the, the code, um, but probably, I mean, for fishers, I mean, for phishing is, again, a big problem. I mean, if they have, if you are visiting a, a phishing page, you have provided their password, and then you will provide the code, and that's it, and the phishing works. So there is nothing in this that actually prevents phishing. So this is a, a big deal, unless you ha actually have checked the domain in the, in the first page. Okay, um, so it also has additional requirements. So phones, probably everybody has a phone nowadays, but the signal may be a problem. So uh, if you are traveling abroad, maybe that's, that's an issue, okay? Uh, another problem is that this requires server side. Probably there is a lot of libraries and services to, to provide this, but still, uh, I don't expect that the, I don't know, four billion websites out there will just implement SMS. I mean, some pretty kid in block probably won't do that, okay? So this is just for, for, um, 
major organizations. Then we have uh, TOTP. Again, all the, all the problems with, with passwords. And uh, now the physical access attack is usually not a problem because you have to uh, unlock your device and, and get into the, um, um, to the, to the TOTP app. So we have some improver, improving here. Uh, but again, phishing is still a problem. You, again, we will give just your password and your TOTP code to the phisher and that's it. It's, it's game over. Okay, so that's why it's so important. Uh, and besides this, well, again, you have some requirements. You now need a, a, an app and a scan a QR, but I would say that's uh, doable. Uh, again, the problem here is that you have to change both the clients and the servers. So this is as SMS. For major sites, it may work, but it's not the solution for, for all. Okay. And well, this security levels is because essentially what you want to, I mean, at least when you enable two-factor authentication is because you care about that uh, account. So still you have some different security levels here. Okay. And then um, the final uh, two-step verification mechanism, uh, the, the push authentication. Uh, so it's the, the thing here is actually quite interesting because now we can have what is called explicit authorization. Now, you don't need to, I mean, most people don't have authorization in the sense that you, are, you need to do a lot of things in order to, to log into the, to the web page. Here is just simply typing yes or no, okay? But now in this yes or no dialogue, you can actually see what are you trying to access to, okay? So, well, right now it's kind of pointless given that this push uh, authentication is only for just major browsers. So if Google asks you yes or no, it's because you are going to access Google. But if you think in uh, extending this to uh, um, more websites, now in that dialogue you can say, okay, do you want, actually, you, do you want to access bank.com or maybe it says, do you want to access back.com.evil.com? So now this is a, like, this could be like a good solution for avoiding phishing, okay? Having this explicit authorization. And this, the, starting, the, the interesting thing here is that uh, this authorization is the only thing you have to do, okay? You don't have to remember anything, well, just your unlock pattern, and that's it. Okay, so it's, it has very nice properties. The problem right now, I mean, again, we have just made few experiments. Uh, the problem is that increase a lot, and I mean, this is kind of fast, we have been having a lot of problems with the uh, sending the decision to the, the yes no to the server. Essentially because this yes or no doesn't go with the HTTP. So actually what the server needs to do is to have some timer there asking if the response have, have gotten there. So we have, the problem is that this is quite variable. In, in some experiments this is zero, in other experiments this is infinite fails you have to repeat. Okay, but this idea, it's kind of interesting for, for uh, preventing phishing, okay? Oh, well, and yeah, and, and FIDO, uh, universal two-factor two authentication, uh, it's again uh, interesting in the sense that, well, and it's much more secure than probably the, any other alternative. Uh, I won't go into the details here, but the user experience is, okay, you put your password, you press a button, that's it, okay? Uh, it has some delays in here, so again, even if it's that simple, you still have, you are in this ballpark between 20 seconds and 30 seconds, that is most, what it most um, second factor authentication uh, requires. Uh, but again, the, the, the good thing here is as in the previous one is also you cannot have social engineering in the sense you cannot ask somebody, okay, give me your, the, uh, the key inside the, the U2FA. You simply cannot do that. I mean, that's, a, uh, this is also as in the, in the smart car, uh, the same as in the, um, in the, um, in the push notification. And again, no phishing because in here, actually the key just checks what is the, the, the public key you want to access, okay? So it's 
kind of interesting, still it takes a lot of time. So I would say that although probably it's more un insecure um, password manager with, with um, autofill, it's better from the user experience perspective. Okay, and then it, this is our proposal, okay? Uh, so let me explain how we get to it. Uh, we essentially just try to steal all the good ideas we have seen and put it together. That's it. Nothing really new here. So um, since the, the thing is, given that we are uh, worried about the, um, the, the malware in the, in the mobile phone, sorry, in the PC actually, uh, what we propose to do is to have a credential manager app in your mobile, okay? Uh, and we say credential instead of uh, password manager because another thing is that right now there are many different credentials out there and there is no like a clean win. I mean, obviously passwords is, is widespread, but I cannot say in five years if push is going to win to TOTP or even SMS. Okay, so probably makes sense like supporting different uh, credentials, especially if you want to go to this transition from passwords to something more secure. Let's say, um, uh, for instance, um, certificates, okay? So what we want to do here, so the idea is that all your credentials are in your, in your mobile phone, okay? They should be secure there. We want to explore how to use local communication to, to communicate with your local phone so that you don't have problems with roaming, with ha not having internet access. So probably we are communicating with the, um, with the smartphone with Bluetooth, which is kind of widespread. And the things here, for instance, is everything is going to be automatic. So the idea is uh, the, the all the, or in most cases, all the uh, giving the credential is going to be automatic, so you are going. So your, the PC w is going to ask you for a, a, the credential of a particular site. So if it's a, a phishing site, you won't provide any credential, and that's it. Okay, so that's the protection against phishing. So essentially, the only thing you have to do it's kind of the, the push notification. Probably it's the most um, similar one. So you just fetch the mobile, unlock it. Okay. Uh, depending on the authorization, maybe you can even skip that, that part. You just tap the notification that the, your PC wants to access. And the most important thing here is this authorization phase. Because um, this is because of these, these different security levels that I think we have lost moving away from, from passwords. Really, users put different level, uh, security levels to their, their accounts. So what we plan to do is to let the user to decide how to authorize a given access. So the access is going to be explicit, so that's another way to, to prevent phishing, and it's an explicit authorization. And now you have, can choose. So for maybe in my case for Twitter, I will just say yes, and that's it. Uh, maybe for the, um, but maybe for the bank account, I want to put an extra pin in there. Okay, so this is to get back these uh, different security levels, and then that's it. You just send the credential or some hash that you require for authentication, and you are done. So the experience, the user experience, is going to be the same as in the push, and ideally, given that the user doesn't have actually. This happens no matter what is the credential you can use. Okay, so you can just use a password and that's it. But if you are going to use a, a, a certificate, actually it's going to happen the same. Actually the user doesn't even know what he's using. He just wants to, to log in and, and that's it. Okay, um, so again, this is clearly something you have, but. We don't know if this uh, unlock, well, obviously you have to unlock this, this bold in there. So probably it's also something you know, and maybe given that in the authorization you can use different things. Maybe you can even have three-factor authentication in here. Although the factors maybe it's that not that important. I mean, the important thing is that it's user and convenient, I mean, it's secure and convenient, and, that, and that's it, okay? And with the bad things, obviously mobile malware is a, is a problem. We have to solve that, probably, um, hopefully, just checking if the, the phone is rooted, 
maybe it's enough to, to prevent some of them, at least the generic malware. And um, besides that, I mean, you need a smartphone and a Bluetooth. Well, the Bluetooth is a problem. We have to do like good engineering here. So uh, the Bluetooth connection to communicate between the PC and the, and the mobile phone takes low time. We have made some experiments and we are able to do, I mean, if you, well, another kind of authorization is just completely always accept. I mean, you don't care about that particular. And in that case, uh, we have been able to do all of this just in two seconds. So it's not that bad. I mean, given that it, if it's an automatic authentication, uh, then you don't even have to touch your, your mobile device. So actually, and that's a very good thing for local access. That's another reason to, to move the uh, credentials away from your computer, because in order to access your computer, you need it outside. OK? Um, OK, so that's most of it. Uh, so just for conclusions, well, obviously, um, there are many authentication mechanisms out there. And they have like very different user uh, experience <coughs> and very different requirements. And this uh, affects, obviously, the deployment. Uh, for our perspective, uh, it's kind of the user experience is quite related to the acceptance. So let's say that, for instance, biometrics, we think that is going to be quite popular, at least in, in mobile devices. Obviously, well, I mean, we are correlated with something that we really don't know if it's relevant as a user experience. Probably we need better metrics for, for considering the user experience. But actually, this is the only one we know now nowadays. So if you have some uh, proposal, we will be happy to, to hear it. And also, I think that there is going to be some, um, we are going to migrate to something you know. <coughs> so that's password. Probably in the end, if you see any of the mechanisms, in the end, it's going to be something you have. Push is something you have. Password manager is something you have. Probably unless biometrics, all, of all, all the rest of uh, user mechanisms need something besides your, your password. Okay, So I would expect this transition. And our hypothesis is that if you want to have a really popular alternative to, to password, actually, one of the main requirements is that you have to provide a better user experience with than, than passwords. And this is really hard in the sense that probably, I mean, for instance, our type, time budget, this means four seconds. So you have to do all the things you want to do in less than four seconds. Otherwise, the user just will type the password and because it's, it's faster. OK? And the good thing is this is probably uh, real for, for mobile fingerprint by two-step two verification solutions. By definition, they cannot do that because they require the password. So nobody what you do, nobody how fast is this, is going to take longer. So users will just only use it in the, in the accounts they, they have. Okay? And also we have, uh, during this study, we have kind of find two things that I think most authentication mechanisms are, have not considered, or at least not at all. The one is support different security levels. It's not that just putting the master password lets you access anything. Okay, It's maybe Twitter or your bank account. And also the explicit authorization. We think phishing would be a problem. And so you need some way to warn the user if he really wants to, um, or, or, or malware in your PC. And you need the user to actually authorize that your PC wants to access something. Okay, So this is the, the main things we want to, to explore in, in our proposal. Okay, So thank you very much. If you have any questions, 